We got the chief back too. Talk about him in a minute. You know, he didn't say much. He's a great listener though. Great to bounce things off of him. Hey, it's a big day for the university, for college coaches across the country. Uh, as we look to uh, culminate a process in recruiting to address both our immediate uh, and the future needs of our, of our football program. Got a few housekeeping uh, things at first uh, uh, before I get started. I want to recognize our coaching staff. Um, uh, these men, uh, tireless efforts of traveling and crisscrossing uh, the state of Texas and throughout the Mid-South, uh, their families and the, the time away from home and the sacrifices uh, that their families go through. And this process just didn't start after the first of the year. Uh, when you go back and you think about uh, last spring, and, you know, spring recruiting and uh, summer camps, both on campus and satellite camps throughout the state of Texas, and then of course throughout the fall, the evaluation, just the tireless efforts um, uh, that they put in and the sacrifices that their families and, and, the, and the fact that their families understand the process. They don't like it probably, but they understand the process. So I'd like to recognize those guys, give those coaches a hand, please. Thank you. <laughs> Especially I'd like to uh, recognize Kyle Kaiser. Uh, Kyle is our newest member of our staff, joined us uh, literally August 1st uh, from Florida State our director of football operations, and that has many hats, uh, one of which is to coordinate our uh, on-campus recruiting efforts. And uh, Kyle did a heck of a job putting his first class together and uh, with the support of a lot of people uh, here in the house, uh, here at the field house, here and throughout campus. So Kyle, I wanted to especially thank you. I appreciate your efforts. Uh, on the campus side, Dr. Patello, as always, your support. Um, I see Mrs. Patello here. Thanks for being here. Uh, Robert Hill, uh, our athletic director, uh, every Saturday morning was there to welcome recruits and visit with their families if they had questions. I'd like to recognize Dr. Berry, our provost, uh, our highest ranking academic official at the university, was at every luncheon during January uh, to meet and greet and answer questions from parents and, and prospects. And you just don't see that uh, on a lot of co college campuses. So I appreciate him as well. Of course, our faculty, all of our internal administration, uh, it takes a lot of people uh, to put together a signing class um, from travel to compliance to a lot of different hats. Um, Jeff, your time, Buck, Rob McDermott, uh, Rob Myers, and of course, Rand and your staff. Again, miss some people, but uh, Andy Collins who helped today I uh, just really appreciate all the efforts. It makes our jobs easier. And that's the thing that's so attractive about Stephen F. Austin is we have a lot of people. We talk about resources. Uh, we're rich, rich uh, in resource of our people and our personnel. and allows us to be able to coach and recruit. And uh, that's what's outstanding about uh, Stephen F. Austin. As I mentioned, this process started last spring, um, right after we signed our, 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 our class last year. Uh, we had to go through a lot of a vi a video evaluations, spring evaluations. We talked about camps, uh, fall evaluations, and the contacts. I know personally uh, I visited with just a little over 40 prospects either at their home or with their parents at their high school or place of business uh, throughout the month of Janu January and a few uh, in December. I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess we traveled tens of thousands of miles. Uh, the running joke is that uh, Coach Williamson rented a vehicle from Enterprise. And about 16,000 miles later, he turned it back in. So if you see a minivan that's for sale, don't buy it. It's probably one that Matt drove. That or it's straight in the junkyard. But uh, we did, uh, we put many, many thousands, tens of thousands of miles uh, in this process uh, and a lot of man hours. It was a collective effort, both on campus, uh, in the, uh, within the state and out of the state where we went to, uh, to identify prospects. I want you to know as alumnus, fans, staff, whatever connection you have, I see a few former players. We got a big crowd today because Coach Underwood's here. Thanks for coming, Brad. Um, we were unbelievably well received, incredibly well received 
by the high school coaches, the community college coaches uh, throughout the state of Texas and throughout the Mid-South. And I think that, that's, that that speaks to the investment that our coaches are making in creating those relationships, knowing that we have a lot of Stephen F. Austin graduates uh, that are in key positions, whether it be um, superintendent all the way down to assistant football coach. So that is always good to have that, uh, uh, that relationship in our footprint because uh, uh, they, they want to help. They love their institution. And, and where we didn't have alumni, uh, we, were, we were very well received. And that, that certainly makes the process go uh, much smoother. OK, uh, to kind of get started with the class here, we brought in six mid-year transfers. And when I call you, you guys' name, and we'll hold applause to the end, um, I want you to come up all the way down far to the end there. And then um, I'm going to visit with you about, about each one of them. All right, the first one, the first mid-year transfer. Now, look, when we're looking for transfers, we're looking for, for young men that can come in and uh, create competition, push for starting jobs, playing time, uh, create depth and competition at the positions of need. Um, there's no secret uh, that we had some depth issues coming into this season because of attrition. Um, anytime there's a transition, roster management, whatever it may be, and um, we were very fortunate to stay healthy this year. But here's an opportunity to address that, and these young men will start uh, with that process. Uh, Jake Nasinski, come on up, Jake. Uh, Jake's originally from uh, Fossil Ridge High School in Keller, Texas. He's a quarterback. Uh, he spent uh, last season, this past fall, at uh, Army Prep School. He signed with, uh, with Army uh, out of high school. Uh, in his senior year, he threw for 2,800 yards and 29 touchdowns uh, while rushing for nearly 900 yards and 13 touchdowns. So he accounted for 42 touchdowns his senior year um, at Keller Fossil Ridge. Uh, he was a two-star uh, recruit by rival scout and 24-7. Uh, Jake fills an immediate need for us uh, with the, uh, the transfer of Joe Menden, who will play his senior year um, elsewhere with uh, Zach and Hunter Taylor being the only uh, two quarterbacks on campus, we felt the need to bring in uh, someone with a little bit of maturity. It's kind of awkward right there, huh? You'll be all right. Your quarterback. Um, Jake, of course, being a year removed from high school, having experience at the, at the prep school at, uh, at Army, uh, fits that bill. And we also followed that up with a high school recruit that we hope to be able to slow cook, and we'll get into to his situation. But we're excited about Jake. Big, strong young man. Uh, was also recruited out of high school by TCU uh, as a linebacker. Is that right? Then they talk to you? Yeah. You were about, what, 225 then? Yeah, we don't want you to be 225. <laughs> J Jake's about 218 right now, so that's a good, good size for him. All right, the next young man is Anthony Lee. Come on up, Anthony. Uh, Anthony uh, and Jake will be a, a freshman next year. Uh, Anthony is a sophomore, a redshirt sophomore, defensive tackle from Missouri City, Fort Ben Marshall. Uh, he's a transfer from the University of Texas at San Antonio. Uh, at Fort Ben Marshall, they had a, a lot of success uh, going 13-1 uh, and one his senior year, undefeated in their district, advancing to the state quarterfinals. In his senior year, he posted 65 tackles. 22 of those were tackles for loss uh, and seven sacks. Again, a two-star recruit by rival scout in 24-7. Uh, Anthony comes to us from UTSA. Beginning of this year, he was hampered with a hamstring injury. Uh, he played in the last five or six games for UTSA. Um, moving forward, we think he's got an opportunity to make an impact on this year's team, obviously. And uh, we're excited to have Anthony, a native of the uh, Houston area. Price Miller. Price is a 6'1", 235-pound junior transfer linebacker. Uh, from Golden West College out in California, originally from Rockdale, Texas, Thorndale High School. Uh, he spent two seasons out at Golden West, uh, 95 tackles, five and a half tackles a loss, uh, and seven pass breakups as a sophomore, big, strong, athletic young man, contact player. Um, in high school, he was a two-year letter winner, uh, named first team all district, uh, I think both his uh, uh, junior and senior year. Um, Young man was recruited uh, by several conference schools, schools out west. Uh, wanted to get back to his home state uh, with the graduation we had of a couple of our senior middle linebackers. Uh, Price has an opportunity to come in as well uh, and impact our defensive football team. 
The next young man is Trey Rosser. Trey's a 180-pound uh, junior defensive back, originally from Clarksdale, Texas, Clarksdale High School, Tyler Community College. Uh, he also spent a little bit of time at the University of Texas, San Antonio, before going over to Tyler Community College. Uh, put up amazing numbers uh, as a quarterback, an all-stater uh, in 2011. Um, I want to say he had well over almost 4,000 yards of total offense his senior year as a quarterback, a tremendous athlete. Um, we had uh, graduated two senior corners. Maurice Poulard is here today, uh, Kevon Madison. So we felt like we needed to bring some maturity in uh, at corner, and Trey gives us that. Had an outstanding career uh, at TJC. Um, the next young man is Zach Starnes. Zach is another defensive back, a safety. 5'10", 190-pound junior from Woodland Hills, California, Sierra College. Uh, finished his playing uh, career there in the fall of 2013, where I think he committed to University of Nevada, Las Vegas, UNLV. Found out he was one credit short. He's a young man that we targeted very quickly after we came in as a new staff last January. He committed to UNLV. And he found out he was one half credit short or one credit short, decided to go back. Um, uh, to Sierra, finished that, did some student coach, stayed in shape, obviously uh, kind of back on the recruiting market, uh, really excited that um, uh, he's with us now. As you can see, he was the MVP his sophomore year um, and a junior college All-American. Not very big in stature, but he knows what four buckles and two screws are used for. I can tell you that. And uh, we're pretty excited about him. A very productive player, contact player will give us some maturity. Of course, Trey Valier uh, graduated, uh, senior defensive back. Uh, Alex Miller will be a senior next year. And uh, Zach will come in and give us some immediate uh, maturity back uh, on the back end at safety. Darrell Vanderson. Uh, Darrell Vanderson's a six foot three. What you weighing now, Darrell? You dropped a little weight? You were about 290 two weeks ago. 275. Uh, defensive tackle from uh, Kapiah Lincoln Community College in Western Mississippi. Went to Macomb High School um, there in Southwest uh, uh, Mississippi. Uh, Three-star recruit out of high school uh, and junior college. Uh, very highly recruited out of junior college. Was originally committed to Appalachian State. Uh, that situation didn't work out. Had offers from Louisiana Monroe, um, Southeast Louisiana, University of Central Arkansas, and others. Um, really excited again with Anthony uh, and Darrell. Gives us some immediate uh, uh, experience, size, and maturity uh, along our defensive line. And uh, kind of stockpiling there. Uh, all of these young men are in school now, in our off season. They will participate in spring practice, and we look for them to have outstanding careers here at the university. Some have two, one has three, and one young man has all four years. So let's give him a lumberjack welcome. That might be the toughest thing you'll have to do this semester right there. OK. And again, with transfers, you want to target specific needs. Uh, and we did. In addition to that, we have two non-scholarship a uh, young man uh, transferred from University of West Virginia who was actually on baseball scholarship, Cole Carter, uh, who is in school and in our off-season program. Cole played at uh, Allen High School, won a couple of state championships at Allen, uh, and Edwin Mims, uh, uh, smaller, speedy slot receiver uh, from here in East Texas that uh, played at Navarro Community College. So uh, those young men have joined our program as well. All right, when we went out to look at this high school class, uh, looking back to the young men that graduated, knowing what we kind of had in place, coming with our transfers, and then moving forward, because you have to vision yourself out uh, as a head football coach probably, you know, at least three years. And we've, we really felt like to, to help our needs as far as immediate needs. Some of these young men could come in here and compete. Uh, but for the future of the program, we thought we had an opportunity here to address a lot of uh, future needs within the program. Really excited to announce this class. Again, it's 21, 
20 of which are high school players and one additional transfer. So we'll kind of get to them right now. And I think we've got some highlights. Is that correct? All right. We'll start with our second quarterback. Of course, you just met Jake um, Mazinski. Now we'll show you Jake Blumrick. Um, Jake's a six foot, 290 uh, pound quarterback from Pearland, Texas. Got two young men from Pearland. And if you remember, uh, last year we signed Marlon Walls from Pearland. Big 6A high school, highly successful. Coach Heath uh, at Pearland, that's a great uh, pipeline to be tied into. Uh, Jake spent a couple of years at Friendswood High School before transferring over to Pearland, where this year he threw for 2,200 yards and 22, uh, 21 touchdowns, only threw one interception. So he valued the football and protected the football. He had a couple of really good receivers, one of which we'll announce in this class. They had early interest from Oklahoma State, uh, some late interest from McNeese. We had Jake in camp. I uh, had the opportunity, Coach Kubik and myself, to work with Jake one-on-one. -on -one. And, uh, you know, particularly with quarterbacks, that's very, very valuable. Good throwing motion, good strong arm. He's going to get bigger and stronger. We'll probably be back in a couple of years to recruit his brother. His brother's about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and plays quarterback as well. And he'll probably be the next quarterback at, at Pearland. Highly productive player, valued the ball, um, 21 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio. We'll take that every day of the week. Again, this is 6A competition uh, at a very, very high level. And he can escape a little bit and extend a play. All right, the next young man is Teddy Britton. Teddy's a 5'11", 210-pound linebacker out of San Antonio Stevens High School. Uh, was offered by uh, multiple schools uh, in our conference, uh, particularly those in Central Texas, Abilene Christian, UIW, HBU over here. Had early interest from UTSA. You can understand that being a San Antonio kid. Um, was the district MVP in 2014. And you'll see several of uh, district MVPs in this class. Posted over two, 320 tackles for his career. 320 tackles. That's a lot of hits. Uh, 18 tackles for loss and had seven interceptions. He holds the school record for tackles and the school record for interceptions with seven. Probably the most instinctive linebacker that we saw on film uh, we watched a lot of linebackers. Obviously, we graduated four last year. Uh, we had six on scholarship. We graduated four of those young men, so it was important that we bring in uh, young men with some maturity, experience, contact players. Um, and Teddy has tremendous instincts and a nose for the football, so we're excited about his future here at the university. A.J. Brown. A.J. is a six foot two, 300-pound offensive lineman from Arlington, Texas. Arlington Martin High School, again, um, large high school in, in the Dallas-Fort uh, Worth area, two-year start on the offensive line. Um, <laughs> plays with a nasty attitude. I think you can see that already. Um, A.B. honor roll student for four years, uh, both track and field and powerlifting. Uh, outstanding young man, had early interest and an offer from North Texas. Um, as well as uh, other schools uh, uh, here in the state. Uh, we project A.J. He's very physical, very strong. We project him to probably be a guard, but could play possibly multiple positions on the offensive line. The video you're looking at here, he's playing primary, primarily offensive tackle. We think he could play uh, guard, possibly center. Uh, 48 pancakes in the last two years. So he's already been... Uh, He's already been dubbed a uh, road grader by me, because he is a road grader. Again, with linebacker being a big need for us, uh, the next young man, Spencer Choka, a six foot one, 220 pound linebacker out of Bryan, Texas, uh, Rudder High School, a three year letter winner there at, at, uh, at Rudder, a three time all district selection. Uh, again, another linebacker that posted over 300 tackles during his prep career. This is what's interesting. This year, he scored four defensive touchdowns. 
That tells you as far as instinct and a nose for the football and being around the football, a young man like this, uh, like Teddy as well, uh, ha has a nose for the football and he scored four defensive touchdowns for his football team. Yep, and uh, he holds a record uh, for career tackles both in a season uh, and a career. An academic uh, all-stater, a three-star recruit by 24-7, rivals and scout, held offers from Sam Houston State, Air Force, Colgate, and uh, Houston Baptist. One of two recruits, am I, am I correct here? One of two recruits whose fathers are from Ghana. Who's the third? I think it's two. It's two, yep, from Ghana. That's a little unusual. Heck of a football player. You know, we graduated the school's all-time leading scorer and our field goal kicker this year, Jordan Wiggs, who helped us get this bad boy. And um, so we felt like uh, with Mason Jewell being the only uh, kicker on campus and being a senior, uh, we needed to come and, and, and get a, a prospect there. Connor Crow is that young man, 5'10", 165-pound kicker uh, from Barry Christian High School down in the uh, Houston area. Uh, won just about every kind of award you can win uh, at his high school, all state, all district, MVP, special teams. Uh, tenth rated kicker in the country by Chris Saylor in this class. He kicked nine field goals over 40 yards, including a career long of 57. Uh, he also averaged over 45 yards a punt for his career. Um, primarily, we'll bring him in uh, to compete for kicking duties. Uh, another young man that was in our camp, like Jake Blumrick, and probably one of the strongest legs as far as kickoff in the state of Texas. And anytime you can kick it in the end zone or out of the end zone, that makes your defense immediately better, and that takes hits off that kickoff coverage team. So, Connor has an opportunity as a young freshman to be able to come in uh, and compete for either the place kicking duties and or the kickoff duties or the field goal duties. And I believe this one right here is 47 yards. Did you see the 57 yarder yet? What's the next one? The one right before it, okay. Big leg, small guy. And he had offers from several of the conference schools and, and interests from out of state conference schools as well. One of the things we really wanted to do was to bluster our receiver position. We signed four receivers in this class, and the theme that I think you'll see is size. We needed to improve our size and our length and our ball skills. We graduated three very accomplished senior receivers this year. The first young man we'll talk about is Reggie Daniels from over in Central Texas, a six foot, 280 pound wideout uh, that went to uh, Pflugerville Hendrickson High School. Uh, played primarily on a, a very successful team, but primarily a running team. He had 30 career receptions for 354 yards and four touchdowns. A two-star recruit by both rival scout and 24-7. Had early offers from BYU and Toledo. Now, we didn't have this young man in camp, but Coach Odoms, our receiver coach, recruits Central Texas. So he's at spring practice. It, where would the corner go to? Texas? Oklahoma. There's a, one of the top rated corners in the country at Hendrickson High School. And they're practicing against each other. And Reggie just wore him out play after play after play on the practice field. Obviously, he has very good video. But our receiver coach got a chance to watch him in person over a two-hour practice and um, didn't want to go far from home. And so you can see he's a very fluid athlete. He's got speed, good ball skills. Knows how to beat man coverage. He's got to get a little bit bigger. Uh, but the type of young man that uh, could make an impact early, but certainly will have a great future here uh, at the university. Now, there's no secret. We just graduated the most prolific running back in school history and one of the greatest in conference history, and Gus Johnson, who I might mention was just invited to the NFL Combine uh, combine last week, and so he'll be re representing Stephen F. Austin uh, at the Combine in Indianapolis in a few weeks. So running back was a priority for us. Lauren Easley, one of three running backs in this class, a 5'11", 200-pound running back, 
uh, from Westside High School down in Houston, a three-year letter winner. It's pretty big-time numbers here. Rushed for over 3,700 yards and 48 touchdowns during his career, which was cut short because of injury. He set a single game record with 425 yards rushing and six touchdowns in one high school football game. And uh, Westside plays Big Britches football down in, uh, down in Houston. Um, he was a semifinalist for the Houston Touchdown Player of the Year, which is probably the most prestigious honor uh, that a high school player down in Houston can have bestowed upon him, and he was a semifinalist for that award. He was receiving national interest as a running back before tearing an ACL later in his senior year. Um, we went through our due diligence and processes through our medical staff and Jeff and Dr. Dickout, a pretty clean ACL, and um, you can see he's an explosive back. He's back straight line running right now. Uh, we're going to do what's best for that young man, whether we bring him in in August or maybe delay his enrollment, that's to be determined. Um, but he is a difference maker, a big back with size, acceleration, and uh, knows how to find the end zone. I think at the end it was us at Northwestern and maybe one or two other schools from our conference. Uh, going back to the safety position, um, Lawrence Gaja, our second young man, his father's from Ghana. Uh, Lawrence is a six foot, 185 pound safety out of Cypress, Texas, uh, Cy Springs High School. Uh, a three year letter winner there, two time all district selection. Uh, he posted 239 career tackles, uh, 29 of which were tackles for loss was originally committed to McNeese State, visited our campus, uh, flipped his commitment, had other offers as well, canceled visits, and we're really excited uh, about, uh, about Lawrence. He was an academic all-district selection this year as well uh, at Cy Springs. Lawrence gives us some length and range. He's a big hitter. He likes contact, but he also has good ball skills and can play in space. We'll be able to shape and mold him uh, throughout his career because he has that length, long arms, and can run. Uh, an accomplished track athlete. Um, we think uh, just an incredible amount of upside and potential uh, for Lawrence. You can see right there he knows what to do uh, with his helmet shoulder pads as well. All right, moving on to uh, our second receiver in this class, Kiki Hill. A six foot three, 216 pound wideout. Six foot three, 216 pound wide receiver, and that's the position he will play, is wide receiver from Goliad High School. His dad is a, a coach and administrator, so he actually played, I believe, at three or four different high schools uh, down the valley and, and, and in the, on the coast in the Corpus Victoria area. I went places recruiting this young man that I have never even heard of, and they're not on the map. <clears throat> A lot of blinking red lights, huh, Coach Odoms? Kiki's a big, strong athlete. Uh, had offers from Colgate, Illinois State, Navy. Wanted to stay in the state. Played multiple positions. Played outside receiver, inside receiver, tailback, corner, safety. We project him. Could play either inside or outside receiver. We project him to probably start off as a slot receiver. Again, 70 receptions and nearly 200 career receptions graduated with Tyler Boyd. That vacuum has to be filled. We wanted to get a little bit more size there, a little more physical presence as far as perimeter blocking. We think Kiki uh, could fit that bill. Another two-star uh, recruit by both rivals uh, and scout. The young man that would probably be fast-tracked, very physically mature. He's averaging probably well over 20 points a game. Uh, at Goliad in basketball. The lone high school defensive tackle, uh, Paul Hill, six foot two, 270 pounder from Van Vleck, Texas, Van Vleck High School. Uh, a unanimous District 13 3A defensive MVP. He had 17 sacks uh, during his uh, high school career. He is the epitome and personifies desire and effort and a hot motor. He's a big, strong young man. Uh, he turned down a gray shirt at Rice University. Very smart young man, plans to major in business here. He also held multiple offers from 
some of the service academies, and some of our in-state conference schools. Obviously, we've got uh, two young men here, and both Anthony and Darrell with some experience, and Darrell could play defensive end as well. Uh, here's a young man that we will want to slow cook. Uh, certainly, we won't hold him back if he's ready to play next year, uh, but he's one that we would like to uh, be patient with, continue to grow him, catch him up to the speed of the game. He's going to be very sound academically. Uh, he is uh, a typical East Texas young man. He likes hunting and fishing. And uh, again, he's just, uh, you know, Rice, uh, wonderful academic uh, education and a good football program, but he wanted to be here at East Texas. He better fit here. And we're excited that he decided to cast his lot uh, with the Lumberjacks. Next young man is Anthony Jacobs, interesting athlete right here. Anthony's six foot, 215 pound. We project him to be a linebacker. He had 12 sacks during his prep career, posted over 60 tackles and 18 tackles for loss. Uh, he was recruited by and had offers from Lamar in Northern Colorado, Montana State, and was also recruited by McNeese State. As you can see here, Anthony was a stand-up defensive end. Uh, he was timed uh, this summer in camps at uh, high four fives. Very explosive, very fast, a little undersized to play defensive end in Division I football. Uh, so we project him to be a linebacker, a weak side linebacker. And uh, again, another young man that we'd like to slow cook. And um, he's got length, very strong. He's going to get bigger and stronger. Uh, and again, uh, the second linebacker in this class, or maybe the third linebacker in this class here, um, where we needed to have uh, some young players coming behind uh, Price, who we signed here at, at mid-year. But uh, very active, can run sideline to sideline, long arms. Uh, he's going to be a big young man as his body continues to mature. Uh, <clears throat> in, our, in our searches far and wide, sometimes you don't have to go very far. Right up the road here at Arp, Texas, Marcos Johnson. I know that's a place very dear to Dr. Patello, who is from Arp. Um, a five foot nine, 186 pound running back, a very accomplished player in, in several different sports, uh, an all-state selection as a junior, helped his team to back-to-back -back playoff appearances the last two years, rushed for over 5,100 yards in his career on 555 carries, averaged 9.2 yards a carry, and scored 72 touchdowns at our high school. In addition to that, he holds a program record for touchdowns in a game with seven. So easily had six at Westside High School. Hope you're keeping count here. Marcos Johnson had seven. In addition to that, he has outstanding hands. He caught, uh, uh, caught a lot of balls uh, at, uh, out of the backfield over at Arp High School. Two-star recruit by both rivals and scout. Plays much bigger than his size, so you can see Tremendous top-end speed. He can stick his toe in the ground and change direction. Marvelous young man. We had him on campus uh, uh, with his sister and his mother this weekend. And he knows how to find the end zone. So we're really excited. He had offers from Colorado State and New Mexico. Didn't want to go too far from home. Was originally committed to Abilene Christian. Changed his commitment and signed with the Lumberjacks today. Did not graduate any offensive lineman. But we felt the need. Next year, we graduate four. We needed to get started on that process of, of filling in for the future of our program. A.J. Brown, who we talked about earlier. Uh, the second is Travis Locke. Travis is a six foot three, 270 pounder uh, from Temple, Texas, and Temple High School. Very accomplished high school football program uh, in Central Texas. A, a first team all district selection this year. He was their offensive line MVP on an offense that had over 8,000 yards this year, nearly 9,000 yards of offense at Temple High School. Um, and of course, that's got to come from good offensive line play. They went 13-2 and two this year and advanced to the state championship game before falling. Um, very uh, squared up young man. Uh, this is where he wanted to go to school. He had offers from other places. He was just holding out and waiting for us. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, we made a, a, a tremendous decision to bring Travis. We had him in camp. He's going to get bigger and stronger, very square in the jaw, very mature, very driven, 
wants to major in criminal justice, uh, and I think because he's played at a very high level and very many high school football games, he'll be able to transition to the speed of the game, uh, both him and A.J. Uh, on the offensive line. Very excited about Travis. Played baseball, so he's a pretty good athlete. You know, you got those big guys playing baseball. They've got good eye-hand coordination and balance. He can really bend, and he's very, very physical. Played primarily offensive tackle at Temple. Could be a guard, could be a tackle for us here at SFA. Next young man's Jack Martin. Jack's from the San Antonio area, New Bronzeville. He's six foot four, 220 pounds. Uh, Two-year letter winner there uh, as uh, both an outside linebacker, a defensive end, and a tight end. Uh, he finished his career with 52 tackles as a senior, excuse me, as a senior, 31 unassisted tackles, and was named his team's MVP. Uh, very, very smart young man, good football IQ, wants to major in either physics or engineering, turned down a gray shirt at Boise State. Um, wanted to be a lumberjack. We're excited that he's going to be here. When you look at our defensive end position, um, <clears throat> we redshirted a young man from Mississippi last year, Maurice Rivers. John Franklin was a true freshman that played for us. We returned Kedrick Harrison, a starter, uh, Jamal Allen, Mitchell Zimmerly. So we have a lot of depth there at defensive end. This young man has a chance to come in and grow. Uh, I mean, he could be 270 pounds one day. Uh, he's got a wide shoulders. He's going to get bigger and stronger. Very active, long, um, rangy young man. That's only going to get better with, uh, with time, and certainly is going to get bigger in our uh, off-season and conditioning program. We think he's an excellent prospect, very strong student. He'll be here for five years. We look for him to have an outstanding career. The next young man is Jordan Martinez, uh, the third running back in this group. Jordan's a 5'10", 190-pound running back out of Grandview, Texas, Grandview High School. he got silly numbers now. This is silly. He rushed for 5,735 yards and 98 touchdowns uh, in his prep career. He set a single-game uh, rushing record with 436 yards in one game and seven touchdowns. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> National Honor Society. Two-star recruit by Rivals, was offered by Colgate. Also had interest uh, from Townsend. Uh, plays with great balance, what I term as a, a one-cut runner. He put his toe in the ground and changed direction. And maybe not have the top end speed um, that Easley and Johnson have, the young man from ARP. But I think he's going to be a tremendous zone runner for us. He has excellent hands, very mature young man. Wanted to be a lumberjack, wanted to stay in the state. We're excited uh, uh, that we've got Jordan. Now, just kind of stop right there. So if you start adding all this up, that's over 15,000 yards of rushing, or right at 15,000 yards of rushing that these three running backs bring to our program. Very accomplished. All of them had six and seven touchdown games, two over 400 yards, one over 500 yards. Um, so we look forward to working with Jordan over the next five years. Uh, the next receiver and the last high school receiver uh, in this group is Jonathan Sam. Jonathan was part of the combination with Jake Blumrick over at Pearland High School. Now, he's a six foot one, 200, and he may actually be 6'2", but uh, at least six foot one, 205 pound wide out. Played primarily safety his junior year, played a little bit of safety his senior year. We had him in camp, explosive athlete. Tremendous ball skills, uh, can control his body. As he gets stronger, he's going to continue to get faster. Um, just a tremendous upside and a high ceiling. Caught 34 balls this year uh, as a senior. Again, I think he'll be a tremendous player for us in our kicking units because he has a defensive mindset. Another big receiver. So we, we're 6'1", 205, 6'3", 216, 6'1", 180. And obviously the 6'1", 180 guy is probably the most fluid with the most speed. Uh, but we think we, we really hit it out the park. Time will tell uh, with the three receivers as well as the linemen and, and, and the running backs. Really excited about Jonathan. Had interest from uh, ACU. He committed to us early. This is what he wanted to do. It didn't help that his girlfriend is already enrolled in school. 
So follow those girls. All right. Next young man, another local product from here in East Texas, Keyshawn Smith. Uh, Keyshawn's a six foot, two hundred ninety pound safety out of Tatum, Texas. Uh, his recruitment really intensified here the last couple of weeks as he was a commitment to North Texas. They had some staff changes at North Texas about two weeks ago. They called him and dropped him. Not sure that was great business, but it worked out for us. And uh, of course, Tatum has been really good to us over the years. Uh, Larry Sinners is out of Tatum and other great players that have, uh, have come from, from that area. Uh, his dad played seven years in the National Football League for the Oakland Raiders and also four years at Oklahoma. His mother was also a track athlete at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, recorded 134 tackles as a senior, played primarily inside linebacker. We see him, and we'll give him a chance to play high safety, but we see him probably as one of our low safeties, our nickel, our jack, uh, our jack nickel position. He's long, very long arm, tall. He's got to get bigger, will get bigger. A three-year letter winner, not just in football, but in baseball. Uh, and basketball. A.B. on a roll, a two-star recruit by both rival scout and 24-7. Also had offers uh, from a couple of the conference schools and Memphis at one time. Next young man is Trayvon Smith, a 5'10", 180-pound safety out of Houston Bel Air High School, another outstanding program uh, in the Houston area. Uh, he will transition to safety in high school, he was a quarterback, but a tremendous athlete. He was his district's most valuable player, the 26A district down in Houston. Threw for over 2,000 yards and 23 touchdowns this year. Rushed for over 600 yards and six touchdowns. Yeah, here's what's great. He threw for around 4,000 yards in his two years uh, as a starting quarterback at Bel Air and 49 touchdowns. But he rushed for almost 1,400 yards and 12 touchdowns. Tremendous athlete. He will have to uh, move on over to the defensive side of the ball. I guess his first question to me is, Coach, do you think I could play some Wildcat quarterback? No, go play safety. That's, that's where you need to be. He had every Division II school in the state recruiting him as a quarterback. He had late interest um, as a preferred walk-on to the University of Houston. Uh, Trayvon is a lumberjack uh, today, and we're excited about him. He gives us another athlete and our defensive secondary and working with our kicking units. We signed Trey Rosser uh, out of Tyler Community College at Corner. We needed to come behind and sign a high school player. Rodney Vesey fits that bill. Five foot 10, 175 pound corner out of Houston Eisenhower High School. Uh, one of my former uh, teammates at Nickel State, Eric Jackson is the defensive coordinator there at Eisenhower. Uh, he called me one night just raving about this young man. Of course, Coach Williamson recruits at school. Uh, we got in there, and he is just a fabulous football player with a huge upside. Named to the Houston Chronicle Top 100, uh, recruits in the, uh, in the city, in the area, a two-star recruit by rival scout in 24-7. Another A.B. honor roll student, held offers from University uh, uh, Lamar, New Mexico State, and others. Um, very long arm. As you can see, most of the clips you're going to see is playing man coverage. Um, plays with a lot of confidence. Play corner, you've got to have a lot of confidence, right, Trey? You know, because sometimes bad things happen. Like a tip ball, you catch it in the Super Bowl, and then the next play you get an interception, right? You've got to play with a lot of confidence. So uh, this young man does have a lot of confidence, plays man coverage. Um, he's going to have to actually learn how to play zone coverage. Uh, which is interesting because he was probably in lockdown man 90% of the time there at Eisenhower High School. But he can flip his hips and run. A tremendous athlete, uh, very confident young man, very gifted. And we're looking forward to working with him starting this summer. Uh, the last of the high school uh, signees today, uh, Alizé Ward. Alizé is another tremendous athlete, a 5'10", 185-pound safety from Prime Prep, Deion Sanders. High school. I'm not sure how many signed out of that school today, but I do know that in addition to Alizé, they had one of the nation's leading receivers who flipped his commitment this morning to LSU. So he played with good competition and against good competition uh, every day in practice. A two-year uh, two letter winner there at Prime Prep, played safety, running back, punt returner, and kick returner. He was his district's MVP in 2013 as a junior, two-time all-conference selection. 
rushed for over 2,700 yards and 21 touchdowns as a running back and had 117 tackles as a safety. He also caught 71 balls for 900 yards. Um, there was some push and pull in our recruiting meetings about whether or not he was a running back or a safety. And uh, to get the kind of athletes that we're looking for there uh, <clears throat> at safety, uh, that's where he'll start his career. He was originally committed to Illinois State, who was the national runner-up at the FCS level and also held offers from Colgate and others. And today he signed with Stephen F. Austin. Very gifted, and he'll have an opportunity along with those, all, all of our players to contribute as they progress in their careers. The last young man, <clears throat> we talked about size at receiver, should be a name that's somewhat familiar uh, to this group, uh, Daquan Ruffin. Daquan uh, signed with Stephen F. Austin in the fall of 2013, I believe, had a very short period of time here on our campus. Uh, out of Summer Creek High School in Humble, Texas. He's six foot two, 192 pounds. He has spent the last two football seasons at Kilgore College, uh, where he caught 45 passes for 790 yards uh, and three touchdowns. Uh, coming out of high school, uh, he was committed to McNeese State and signed with Stephen F. Austin, held offers from Colorado State and, and maybe a couple of other FBS schools, was a two-star recruit by rivals. Last two years, he's been up at Kilgore. We felt like, in addition to the three high school receivers, we really needed to bring in another tall receiver uh, with some maturity. And this young man's caught nearly 50 passes in college now. And so he obviously, we think he's got a chance to transition on the field as he learns our system. Big hands, attacks the football, tremendous body control, very strong, return kicks as well. Uh, we think the young man has a huge upside. Spent about an hour with him. Um, a week or two ago, maybe an hour and a half at the subway there in Kilgore, just visiting, Mr. Finley. We, we, we didn't have anything to eat, just visiting. But um, that would be a violation if I bought him something to eat. What if he bought me something to eat? Would that be okay? But anyway, we were just visiting, and uh, what a nice young man. Uh, you know, I think uh, sometimes when one door closes, another opens. That opened for him at Kilgore. And we certainly opened the, the door for him to return. Held offers from Missouri State, Texas State, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Texas Southern, uh, and received a lot of interest during the season from Louisiana Tech and Memphis. So he felt like it was home when he came back for his official visit. So we're excited to welcome him back. And as you can see, uh, that gave us our fourth wide receiver, all 6'2", 6'3", 6'1", guys that can catch the football, attack the ball, Big, strong presence uh, on the perimeter. Okay. Lights, please. <laughs> Certainly every college coach in the country is going to stand up here and talk about how great their class are. We do feel like we have brought together a tremendous collection of athletes. The reality of it is, and you guys, I'll always tell you the truth. Uh, we'll know in a couple of years on the high school guys. Uh, some may impact our team immediately. We had nine freshmen uh, in our signing class of 16 or 17 uh, that played for us last year. Some more prominent roles than others, but they all contributed in our success in an eight-win season. Uh, we redshirted the other half of that class. Uh, this year, uh, we'll never hold anybody back. Uh, they'll all have a chance to come in. Obviously, we got a lot to replace with Gus Johnson. Uh, a lot of uh, yards, uh, um, uh, receiving yards. One of the school's all-time leading tacklers, and Colin Garrett and Ishmael Miles, one of the all-time tackles. So we'll, we'll have guys that'll have an opportunity to step up. We feel like we address the needs. We'll know as it goes, but all these young men are excited about coming to Nacogdoches. They're excited about the future of our program. They understand our vision. Their parents do, uh, sitting in their homes. Uh, I don't think, I think that it's crystal clear of what we want to do and uh, what they want to be a part of, and we're really excited about that. To close this up, I always, because I won't see the media or most of you guys again for a while, I always kind of want to talk about the state of the program very briefly here, and I'll kind of piggyback on what Rand said earlier. You know, a year ago we were standing here introducing a very small class of 16 or 17 players, and it was a whirlwind. I mean, a whirlwind. I think that's the word I used. We had to hire staff. We had to move their families. 
We had to try to stabilize a three-win team going through a transition. Um, I think I used the words wounded and fragile at the time. After 10 months and some successes and tireless efforts by our staff and many associated with us, uh, the eight wins that Rand talked about, I think this is very important. We went on Parents' Day. We went on homecoming, the two top 10 wins, getting the chief back on campus, uh, seventh trip to the national playoffs. We put our APR on much stronger footing, so much so that uh, uh, we received an award last year for the most improved APR on the campus, and we hope to win the award as the best APR in our conference, uh, best uh, improved APR in the conference, and we hope to win the award for the best APR in our conference uh, in the next two or three years. So 10 months later, I think we're healthier. I think we're healthier. I think we're stable. Uh, well, there's a long-term commitment in place to our coaching staff from the institution. We've been able for the most, I think, for our, all this year, still hanging on, but our entire 10-member coaching staff uh, is still in place. Stability. The players understand our vision. They understand what our expectations are. They understand consequences. Um, so I think we're healthier. I think we're stable. I think they understand also, too, what we expect for them socially, on and off the field. Now, we've got a lot of work to do. We still have an awful lot of work to do. We're a work in progress. We're a work uh, under construction. As I talked about, we graduated some great players and some natural attrition and some roster management. There's big holes to fill. Some of these guys right here. Some of the young men that we just introduced on the video are going to have to step up to replace those outstanding players. But I think we've got a more confident group of young men uh, on campus right now working very diligently. These young men have been embraced by them. And I think they're melting into that culture of understanding expectations, understanding choices, and the effects it has both negatively and positively on our football team. And we've got a tremendous group of non-scholarship guys that are going to compete uh, as well. And this is probably more for the media, but we return nine offensive starters, only five defensive starters, but that is 14 starters. A lot of our special teams uh, operation comes back, a punter, a deep snapper, a kickoff returner, and all, a kickoff man, and all of our returners. Certainly we'll have to replace Jordan Wiggs, and that'll be a competition that'll be ongoing throughout the spring and, and summer and fall. But we do ex return an experienced quarterback one that was pretty accomplished last year with about 3,400 yards of offense and 30 touchdowns. Standing here a year ago, uh, we had a big question mark there. So we're really excited about Zach Conk and um, Hunter Taylor and Jake Nazinski and, of course, uh, Jacob Blumrick. But um, having that piece there for the next couple of years is a very important part of any successful football team. There aren't many teams that win at the highest level that there's not experience at quarterback or some, uh, some type of experience there. The strength of our team, we really believe, is going to be on our offensive and defensive lines. No pressure guys back there, but we return all five offensive starters on the offensive line. They're bigger and stronger right now, and they're going to get bigger and stronger. We feel like we have three potential NFL prospects in that group. We return five of six on the defensive line, and we feel like we've got a couple of guys that will get looks there as well. So we're really excited because to win in Division I college football, to win in high school football or the National Football League, you've got to be able to control the line of scrimmage. So we feel good about that. We also feel good about the young men that will be coming um, in the fall. Return 42 lettermen of the young men uh, that have lettered for our program. 23 of them have started college football games here at SFA. I'm a very process-oriented coach, so we, we work things in small bites. Of course, I've got to kind of think out past my nose. So, But right now, we're in the off-season process. That's where we are. The 7 a.m.s, the 6 a.m.s, the, uh, the, the extra throwing and catching, all the things that we do. We've got three more weeks of off-season after this week. We're grinding on our academic journey right now. Um, and in three weeks, we'll start spring practice. And that'll be the next process. But we only want our players to concentrate on school right now, 
These guys getting acclimated and jumping out in front. Our young men making sure their academic journey is solid and then get as big and strong as athletic as we can uh, this spring. We will start spring practice on Saturday, March the 7th and conclude spring practice on Saturday, April the 11th with our spring game. In addition to our spring game, there'll be two other scrimmages that we will hold. One of those scrimmages we will take on the road with us uh, into East Texas, looking at going to the Longview Tyler area this year. Last spring, we went down to Lufkin for one of our scrimmages. Well, I always think that's a big part of uh, putting our brand out uh, here in East Texas. Um, we're really focused on our team right now and, and all the areas that we need to continue to improve. We are healthier. This class and these young men make us a little bit healthier. We're a little bit more confident in what we're doing. Uh, we've seen the dragon. We saw Northern Iowa. Our, our players had not had postseason experience. Of course, Northern Iowa was the only team to beat both Illinois State and North Dakota State. Uh, we were a little embarrassed at times about how we played in that game. So we've come back to work. We've added some pieces. We want to get back there uh, and certainly be able to do uh, more damage. But the work we do right now is not very sexy. The fans aren't in the stands. The band's not playing. The cheer team's not out there. Heck, we're kind of having to fight the, the track team to, to get space on the field. But work we do right now, we hope we'll pay dividends next fall so we can keep the chief, obviously make a difference down at NRG. We open up with uh, TCU, which will probably be the number two team in all of college football next year, and open up uh, McNeese, uh, first conference game. So we got a lot of work to do before we get to that. So our focus right now is on us so that when we get to the fall, all these processes uh, will be in place, layers on top of layers, so we can even be a better football team and a better program next year. So, with that said, are there any questions about these prospects or these young men for myself or any of my coaches? Yes, sir. Coach, I, I think some of those guys have a distinct advantage. A couple of them were coached by good Steve F. Austin boys or Michael Reedy and Thompson Ridge, Dale Irvin and Arnold, so they probably had a much uh, well, it, it helped us to be able to go in there and have those relationships, no question about it, Bob. Coach, you talked a lot about the slow cooking. And, uh, maybe speak on uh, where the needs would be immediate with your freshmen. <clears throat> well, again, we graduated four senior linebackers. We brought in one transfer uh, and Price Miller here, so there's obviously some help wanted signs there. Um, we graduated three in the defensive secondary both corners and safeties. So there's, there's, there's some, some opportunities there. Uh, and then on the offensive side of the football, you, you just lost the most prolific rush in our school's history. So uh, we do have three young men on campus right now, some with more experience than others. But you have to think that possibly um, one or two of those freshmen are going to get looks there. And then receiver, yeah. Coach, sorry, we got to. That's okay, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir, Coach Simmons. Would the offseason need and a need in spring be uh, to really find a running back? To just hit the guys going to carry the. Yeah, I, you, you hope that what you're looking for is on campus right now, but you can't discount what may be coming in the fall either. I mean, we, we, those young men that we just talked about were highly productive players at a very high level in high school. Uh, but you've got a Fred Ford, who's a fifth-year senior, Josh West, who's a junior, Cameron Washington, who's a fourth-year senior. So uh, you really hope that those guys will emerge and that the freshmen can come in and complement those guys. But again, we saw what a true freshman at Georgia did this year, you know, and uh, maybe one of the best in the Southeastern Conference and at LSU as well. So uh, I don't think you hold anybody back or make any type of curb judgments. So, uh, but you hope that the majority of the pieces that you need are on campus right now for that frontline responsibility. I guess one more question, mm -hmm. Coach. Last year, you know, you just kind of pieced some things together because you're new and, and your coaches, and it was a kind of a need and kind of a quarterback and bringing guys in. Sure. How's, that, how's this one compared to last year? Well, I think we were able to be much more thorough. Um, I don't think there's any question. Again, you start your process in the spring. We've gone through spring, summer, camp, so forth, fall evaluations and contacts. You know, half of the kids that we signed in last year's class were on our 
radar from our previous school. Uh, the other young men, we really good players, but we had to we had to really hit it on the fly. And I think our coaching staff with the the, the camps that we had. Uh, I think if you look, maybe five or six, seven of our players that we signed were coming out of our camps. Um, and just the, the time to evaluate film and to build relationships, uh, we had that this year. We'll have that in the future. We did not have that in last year's class. And that's not to take anything away from last year's class because we have some fabulous players in last year's class. I appreciate everybody being here. Um, I know we're in the midst of basketball season and we start our spring sports here, but it's always good to get a little touch of football uh, in early February. And uh, uh, I'm sure we put putting information out about our spring scrimmages and so forth. And uh, as always, Axum Jacks. Thank you.